Heavy snowfall caused havoc for traffic in the Russian city of Magadan on Friday after a powerful cyclone hit the country's far east overnight. Snow covered roads and sidewalks for some 12 hours, trapping cars, emergency vehicles and even snow plow machinery. Rescue services were stationed at the most treacherous roads in the city and on the magadan balagano Italon regional highway, according to Vyacheslav Kozlov, the regional deputy head of the country's emergency ministry. Snow is typical for the Magadan region in October, but usually it appears gradually, unlike this year. The cyclone is expected to continue in the area for another 24 hours and then move towards Kamchatka and Chukotka. ехали и встали, застряли снег на обочину. Где КДМки? Где что? Всю ни одной машины нет на дороге. Тротуары, вот надо на вторую полосу переехать, не могу. Тяжело снег, тяжелый, ну, резко так. На опасных участках в городе выставлены спасательные посты на высокопроходимой технике, а также на перевалах территориальной дороги магадан балаган талон The sun was starting to dip low on the horizon off the coast of Nantucket on Saturday when fishing buddies Nicholas Whitbeck and Joe Torme spotted what they thought was a dead whale on the horizon. Squinting closer, they noticed what appeared to be a man perched on top of the whale waving his hat. The whale turned out to be capsized fishing boat that the man who had lost his cell phone when his boat tipped over had been using to stay above the water as he tried to attract attention from passing vessels. If nobody responded, the man faced a long, chilly and lonely night on the water which was about 55 to 58 degrees, enough for hypothermia to set in quickly. Whitbeck said they just relocated to an area with fewer fishing vessels to try their luck there when they spotted the object in the distance. Joe initially pointed it out, thinking that there was possibly a dead whale on the horizon a couple miles from us or less. Upon further inspection and a little bit of drifting we kind of kept an eye on it. It ended up looking a lot more like a boat that had capsized, Whitbeck said. He mentioned almost immediately after recognizing that that there seemed to be a pair of hands waving, he added. We immediately kicked into action. The two stowed away their gear, pushed boat to full throttle and alerted the coast guard. We got close to him, spoke to him first, got him a life jacket with a boat hook so that if in the exchange of him getting onto our boat there was a mishap or anything and he was in the water, he had a flotation device with him, he added. Maneuvering their boat into position to get him on board was difficult in part because there was an anchor about the waterline that could have punctured their boat. In talking to him we found out a lot more details about how serious and dire the situation was, Whitbeck said, the man said he'd been sitting on the hull of the capsized boat for about an hour, drifting away from land and other boats as the clock ticked near 4 p.m. At this time of the year we were losing daylight fast. Us arriving at that time really was a right time, right place scenario for that type of rescue, he said. The man told them that a larger wave had tipped over his boat. He said he'd attempted to flag down three other boats but no one saw him. Whitbeck said it was just luck that they'd spotted him. He said the man was a bit reserved at first given what had happened but was very very grateful when they connected later. Torme, who had Coast Guard training, said those on the water are quick to help each other out if they find themselves in trouble. Any fisherman would do the same as we did. We're out there. There's not many people. 
We rely on each other a lot especially on Nantucket where we're an island and it's very limited, he said. Uh, we stopped, take a peek at some area that was uh, holding some fish, took a few casts, and that's right where we uh, picked up on um, what seemed to be an object in the distance. Um, Joe initially pointed it out, thinking that there was possibly a dead whale on the horizon uh, a, a couple miles from us or less. And you know, upon further inspection and a little bit of drifting, you know, we kind of kept an eye on it. It ended up looking a lot more like a boat that had capsized. And he mentioned uh, almost immediately after, you know, recognizing that, that there seemed to be a pair of hands waving. And that triggered the response. You know, we immediately you know, kicked into action. Uh, we started to put away all the rods. He was behind the wheel, started to, you know, push the engine to full throttle and uh, got on the line with the Coast Guard and we were on our way there. We got close to him and uh, got him a life, spoke to him first, uh, got him a life jacket uh, with a boat hook so that you know, if the exchange of him getting onto our boat, you know, there was a mishap or anything and he was in the water, he had a flotation device with him because when we pulled up, he had nothing uh, on him besides a hat that he was waving. So. In talking to him, we found out a lot more details about uh, how serious and dire the situation really was. Um, prior to us arriving, he had been on um, the hull for about an hour adrift, you know, and he was drifting southeast, um, essentially away from land, away from boats, um, getting further and further away. Um, and in that wait of about 45 minutes to an hour, he said he had, you know, attempted to flag down three different boats that had passed by him and none of them saw him. And at this time of the year, you know, we were losing daylight fast. So, you know, us arriving at that time, it really was a right place, right time scenario um, for that type of rescue. Otherwise, the possibility of him trying to figure out um, getting through the night was going to be very real. I mean, it's just one of those like worst case scenarios, you know? Yeah, I mean, being on the water, you never know what's going to happen. Um, we're out there by ourselves a lot, um, you know, and it's one of those things. It was just, you know, it's the worst case scenario. Exactly. You just don't know what you're going to see. And unfortunately for him, it was as bad as it could get. And, you know, I think any fisherman would do the same as we did. Just waiting to see what the Coast Guard wants to do. I don't know if they have I don't know what Seto would do, you know? I mean, well, they might. 